that's fine. Uh, I am the Uncensored Chef. Thank you for joining me on this Wednesday evening. Um, tonight I've decided to share something a little bit different with you guys this evening. Um, the base of what I'm going to make is, is, is not different. It's very traditional. It's a great word for it. Traditional. We're going to throw a little twist. Um, but really what we're going to do, we're going to make a, a meat sauce. We're going to make fresh, fresh handmade gnocchi, which is a potato pasta done in little dumpling shapes, um, which I totally forgot to grab my gnocchi board out of my bin. So I'm going to have to go rummaging around here once we get the sauce simmering. Um, but tonight's little twist, the little twist that we are going to throw in this evening is that in our meat sauce, because of an amazing individual that I work with, um, I lucked out. I have some moose meat. Yeah, moose meat. That's right. So we're going to make a meat sauce that's going to be comprised of a little bit of moose meat. And we're going to have some pancetta. We're going to have some herbs. It's going to be very, this can be... What I'm doing is basically a, a meat sauce that can be done with any kind of ground meat, turkey, pork, beef, whatever you have. I just happen to have moose, so we're going to do it with moose, because why not? So we're going to get kind of cracking right at this right away, because um, we've got a lot to do. So the only thing I pre-done for this entire thing today for the stream is I skinned and parboiled my potatoes. So they're nice and cooled and dried, and they're nice and flaky, and we're going to be able to break these down and make gnocchi with those very easily. So that's the only thing I've pre-done for the stream tonight, and we're just going to kind of put those to the side, because we'll deal with those a little bit later. So the first thing that we're going to do tonight is I am going to pre-cook the moose meat. We're going to get it all browned off, we're going to get it all cooked down, and then we're going to start building our sauce. We're going to get that simmering away. And then we're going to work on our gnocchi. Because n luckily for us, as long, like with having the, the potatoes pre-done, which is the, really the longest part of making gnocchi, that's all you really have to do. You can let the dough sit and rest. Generally, you kind of want to let things sit and rest, as usual. But this one, you don't really have to with the potato starch in there. It does help bind things a little bit quicker. So, right off the bat here, we're going to grab this plate. So this is very fresh. Um, the person I work with, her husband went hunting like a couple of days ago. And uh, this is a very, very fresh, fresh batch of moose meat. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is the big difference with game meat is how dark it is. And the other thing you're going to notice is for how big of an animal a moose is, there is very little fat in here. Moose meat is incredibly, incredibly lean. It's very good for you in that way, and that there is very little to no fat on there. As you can see, like this stuff is just falling apart. It's a little bit frozen in the very center, but that's okay because we actually only need about that much anyway. So we're just gonna set that little frozen nugget off to the side. Get that out of the way for now. So, like I said, moose meat, very, very, very lean. So, that's why when we make the sauce, we're going to add some pork fat. Right now, what we're going to do, though, is we are just going to brown this off in our skillet with as little fat as we can handle in, in there with it. We don't want to add too much extra fat now because we're going to add fat later. So, right now, all we want to do is we want to cook out the moisture in here. So then when we add it back to the sauce later, we're not adding too much water content. So we're going to get that out of that fresh butcher paper. Because this stuff, like I said, this was processed, I believe, oh, I think she told me like two or three days ago. They brought this back and had it all, once it came back all certified and they were able to process it in, uh, <clears throat> in the local butcher shop. Um, they started doing that, yeah, that was only a couple of days ago. So we're just going to get that to the side. And like I said, right now, all we're going to do is just like we, you would with ground beef or any kind of other ground meat, all we're going to do is brown this, this stuff off. Now you can kind of tell already that 
again, that deep, rich color. Um, it's, a, it's, it's different than what ground beef looks like. And even, even the texture is a little bit different. Again, because of how lean it is and the way the muscle structure is, because this is a wild animal, it's wandering around a lot. So it is free range at the, at the, at the best of its ability to be free range. But it's the leanness that comes from it being a wild animal, which, which is always on the move, which has to travel great distances to cover to get food, especially here in Canada, it has to survive winters. The, the meat is very toned, and it, it's very nutrient rich, but again, there's not a lot of fat there. Not a lot of fat at all. So, I'm just gonna grab that container up here real quick. So the beautiful thing about that is it doesn't take long for this to cook. So we're just gonna, again, this was pretty fine grind on here, which is great. So that means when we get it in the sauce, it's gonna kind of disappear a little bit, which is not a bad thing. Because for a lot of people, mousse is a very strong flavor when eaten by itself. Like if you were to just have like a straight up mousse burger, it's, it's a very dominant, very unique, unique flavor. If you've ever had venison, if you've ever had other kinds of wild game, you kind of know a little bit of what I'm talking about. Moose, the only one the other animal that really kind of compares at that level. Hold on one second, please. Just had to go scare a cat away from my computer. Um, the only other animal that really kind of compares on that level as far as, again, gaminess, as far as that really kind of bold, over overstanding flavor, would be like bear. And again, most people around the world have not eaten bear or don't eat bear or don't have the opportunity to. Um, it's not for everybody. Again, it, these are strong, dominant flavors. Just because of the nature of the animal itself, what they eat, how they grow, the nature of their environment, they taste different. Now, earlier today, actually Ray, in uh, in chat there, we were playing a little bit of Borderlands earlier today, and we, we were kind of talking about this a little bit. And one of the things that kind of happened is that this meat was removed from our diet. Through modern convenience, through modern farming, game meats have been removed from our diet. Venison, elk, uh, moose, bison, bear, all of that stuff was removed from our diet. There are certain things that have been brought back, uh, bison being what probably easily the most popular, followed by like elk and venison are kind of borderline similar. Uh, ostrich meat, obviously another thing that's kind of been introduced into our palate um, through farming practices. But the big game meats, the ones that not only did we use because of pure survival, based on the, the fact that they are large animals and they provide a lot of meat, and a lot of meat and items for the amount of effort you have to put into taking them down. But that, like, again, that was all kind of like, that was removed. And that takes it away from our taste buds. Our taste buds forget. We have taste memory. That's one of the strongest things that we have. So we're going to pop that meat out of here. And again, that's just all now browned out. Totally put that into the wrong bowl, but that's okay. It's gonna make my gnocchi in there, but that's okay. So that we're just gonna kind of sit to the side, and we're just gonna let that hang out. Now back to the pan. We're gonna turn that way back up, and now we're gonna start building the base layers of our sauce. So the first thing I'm gonna throw in there today, pan chat. Really, all pancetta is, is a different way of making bacon. It's fancy bacon. Um, there's no smoke on it. It's more of a longer salt cured. It's not brined. So it does have a little bit more of a salty pork flavor. Um, and what I like about this is the, it's really nice and thin. And what they do is they, they open up the belly of the pork and then they roll it when they cure it. So it has like a really nice little shape in there. I like this as an alternative to bacon if you need a salty pork product and you don't want to use salt pork. Because salt pork is, a, is as aggressive as hell. It is super salty. Beware if salt pork is something that you did grab on accident. Or if you know how to use it, 
good on you. But pancetta is a great, great alternative. Now, pancetta can technically be consumed in this state, uncooked, uncooked. It's cured. I don't recommend it, but you can. You can just peel this off and you can eat this. But what we're going to do is we're just going to cut those guys in half. We're just going to cut these really nice, big, strong, big, long strips of the pancetta. Because we want to add some texture. Because that moose meat was such a nice, thin, thin, fine grind, we want to add a little bit more texture into our sauce. So we are now going to take that pancetta, drop it into our pan that's been heating up on the side here, same pan that we did the, the moose meat in. So I'm just going to turn that on real quick. Sorry for how loud it has to be in here now. Because unfortunately, that fan is more of a loud time. Kick it up a notch. Alright, so we're going to open up all that tension. Yeah, sorry, it's getting a little smoky. So now that that pancetta is opened up, I'm going to leave that alone. We're going to come back over here. One onion. We're going to take the whole onion, quickly knock the edges off. It's going to be a bitch to peel, so we're going to go down a layer. So those are tight papers on there. Turn that off now. Now we are going to go again. Because this is a rustic style dinner, I don't want fine. We want nice, kind of small. Not fine, small. Because we want chunks. Chunks of sauteed onion and pork fat, stewed in some tomato that we're going to add in a little bit here. Like, that's heaven. That's, that's just flavor country and a half. We're going to throw some herbs in there. Mm. So again, small dice, not fine small just like so Get those guys out of the way now move that pancetta around now the really nice thing again about the pancetta is because it's so thin that fat tends to melt away and what you end up being left with is just a really really nice like soft chewy and you can actually take this very very crisp um cured pork product it's just it's delicious so uh, we're uh, just below super high heat on that so now that that is th is right at that point we're just starting to crisp up we're rendering our fat out nicely we are going to add in our single onion and we're going to get that going now while that onion is doing its business I have a very annoying clove of bulb of garlic here. Um, so we're using three quarters of an entire bulb. Because, um, again, it's 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 pasta, man. We're, we're making an Italian-inspired dish. And garlic and herbs and big flavors are what this is all about. Plus, once again, referencing back, moose meat is a very very strong flavored meat it accepts a lot of flavor you can just pour garlic and you can pour onions and, and just everything onto it and you're not going to take away anything from the mousse it's still going to be there but it's going to be much more palatable now the way i'm taking off the garlic papers here is just a simple twist of the garlic all it does is break the bond against the skin you can kind of pull these guys out usually it'll work if not, that's when I'll start smashing garlic bulbs and we'll get everything all messy. But, that seems to work pretty alright. So we'll get that out of there. Now again, the garlic. I'm not going to fine dice this at all. All we're going to do is we're just going to cut these cloves. Simply across. Leave them in kind of bigger chunks right now. And then we're just going to kind of go across again. Just chop it, chop it, chopping. Get that out of there. 
and we're just going to kind of leave them a little on the chunkier boy side. Because we want big, bold chunks of flavor. You want to get a big piece of garlic, a nice piece of onion, a good piece of pancetta. Now look at that unbelievably sexy pancetta. That golden brown. Oh my god! Porky delicious. All right, those onions are nice and soft. In goes my garlic. Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. Oh, yes, small queen. Moose meat. Hey, it's been a minute. How you doing? Welcome in. Yeah, no, it's moose meat tonight. Um, we got sneezes happening here. Hold on, we're studying things. Um, yeah, we. I, I, again, a friend of mine at work, uh, her husband went on a hunting trip. Uh, he bagged a moose. And um, if, if you know anything about moose, they are enormous. You were talking, um, I believe she said that after, because uh, the butcher they use takes meat as payment. Uh, after everything was said and done, she said they ended up still bringing home about 800 pounds uh, of meat after the butcher took 20% of the meat. Insane. Like, just, it's absolutely insane. So, onions, garlic, everything's in, sweating down nicely. That pancetta has crisped, all the fat has come out. Now, we come on back to the moose meat. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm simply going to drain the extra water out of the bottom of the bowl here, out of that ground meat. So we don't want that moisture there. That's why we pre-seared this. That's why we let it sit and chill out for a minute because we want to get a little bit of that extra moisture out. Now, right back in there. So you can already see how kind of fine the meat is. Now, again, this. Oh, see, that is. Honestly, it's been a minute since I've had some moose. That tastes better than I remember, which is a great thing. Um, sorry, I just got all Martha Stewart on me for a minute. It's a good thing. Um, that's really tasty. I forgot how good that was. All right. So, and again, you could do this with ground beef, ground turkey, ground chicken, pork, a mixture of any or all of those together. Um, I honestly recommend adding some kind of brown, ground pork. Um, if you can't, like if it's a religious thing, don't. Um, pork is your best friend when it comes to this kind of stuff because it adds fat and fat is flavor. All right, herbs and tomatoes. We're gonna turn that guy down to just above medium, let it kind of sit down. We've got basil and we've got oregano. Excuse me. And we've got garlic paper to get out of the way. Out of the way, garlic paper. All right. So first, herbs. Fresh oregano. Cannot be beat. Love fresh oregano. Whenever I make a tomato sauce, like oregano, basil, I know it's cliche because they're like, well, it's, it, it's Italian. It's tomato sauce, like, of course. But, like, th th there's a freaking reason that you find tomatoes packed <laughs> with oregano and basil and these specific herbs. They pair so well. Um, oregano and basil stand up to the acidity of tomatoes and the hardiness. And it adds a really nice bouquet because they've got an amazing, amazing aroma once they hit the pan. Um, and of course, as you're hitting them up here, as you're bruising them, you are breaking those water bonds. Mm. And you're releasing the aromas. You're getting all of that beautiful aroma out. And this is just going to be super delicious. So all we're doing is just like you would with thyme. All you do is you grab the stem and you go down back off the stem. And you just kind of lightly pinch. And all that stuff just kind of flies right off the edge, just like so. So oregano and basil. Now, if you wanted to get fancy with your basil, you could do what's called a chiffonade, which is a very fancy way of saying roll those bitches up and then cut them nicely on a slant. Um, we're not going to do that. We're not doing any fancy French techniques today. 
we're going to hack and slash these jerks and then we're going to toss them into the pot with the tomatoes. Because it's just that kind of thing, man. We're just going to, we're just making a rustic sauce. There's nothing fancy about this. So we're going to take all of our leaves, gonna pile them into the center. I know a thing or two about piling leaves. <laughs> I mean, all right. Uh, and then we're going to cut. And we're just going to chop and chop and chop and chop and chop and chop. Now, once all the way through, grab them with your knife, turn them to the other direction, and again, go down the other way. If you're doing a rustic, rough chop, that's all I recommend. That's it. That's all you need. You want nice big chunks, and then again, you're going to go one way, turn them, go again. You're going to break everything down at least once and twice. This, right on top, in we go. Now, while those herbs sit on top, right now, crack black pepper. Lots. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve solid cracks of pepper. No salt yet. Because we have the pancetta in there, I don't want to add any salt. We're going to add our tomato. We're going to get this up to a nice simmer. We're going to let it simmer and stew down a little bit, and then we're going to check it later. We'll add salt later if we need it. But right now, we're saying no to salt. So, those fresh herbs, oh, you can hear them. You can hear them. So when they just kind of touch in there, and they're hitting that pan, you can hear the water that's starting to evaporate out. It's a beautiful, nice temperature in there. Now, just before I add my tomato, we are going to add the smallest amount of chicken stock, just to get everything off the bottom of the pan. All we're doing is very, very slightly deglazing. I'd probably put maybe a sixth of a cup, maybe. Now, canned tomatoes for your tomato sauce. Now I have chosen crushed tomatoes and what are these guys? These guys are diced tomatoes. So diced tomatoes are going in there for, again, texture, crushed tomatoes for sauce. Now, if you are making a little bit more of a traditional style sauce, you would throw a little bit more little tomato paste in there and you would omit the diced tomatoes. But again, we're playing around with this. We're changing it up a little bit and we're just giving our own little ties to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these diced tomatoes. And we're gonna add the small can of diced tomatoes in first. Because I really want to make sure I get those tomatoes in there, and I'm going to top it up with the crushed. Now, the nice thing about crushed tomatoes is that they are completely pulverized. They've been put through a food mill. They're completely pureed down, but they're not watery. They still have a little bit of texture to them. So what I like to, why I like to add these in here is because now we're going to have a little bit more body to our sauce because we're going to have these nice chunks of texture. Because this is a meat sauce, we're not processing this. I'm not going to puree it. I'm not going to blend it. I want those nice little bits of tomato in there, but I also want the rich and silkiness that you get out of the crushed tomato. So we got that in there. That's going to be nice. And again, so this is the texture of your crushed tomatoes. So we're just going to add that right in there. Yeah, and we're just going to add all that in there. And we are not going to skimp on the sauce. So, that's all taken care of in there now. That out of the way. Now, we're going to work everything from the bottom up. Because we want to make sure that all of that stuff that was kind of stuck to the bottom is going to get worked into the sauce. You see how much that actually stays dry and unsauced underneath unless you kind of really do a really good pull of it. Now that already looks insanely good. I just want to kind of bathe in that. Possibly make four or five lasagnas. But I'm definitely going to smother some yolky in it in about 25 minutes here. So, hopefully you guys can stay with me and hang out, but boy, is this just looking unbelievably good. This is just magic in a pot right there. So, now that we have our sauce ready, set, and good to go, I am going to turn it down. Woo! 
get a little, little pops on his ass. There it is. I thought I grabbed it, away, but I didn't. So we're just going to get that nice and stirred in. I've now turned my sauce down to just above low, right down towards the simmer. If you have a simmer setting on your oven, set it to simmer. We're going to put a lid on there. And now we're just going to leave that alone. All right. Now, I'm going to just tidy this up real quick. And then we're going to move on to the next part. Huh. Oregano leaf. Wonderful. I'm glad it stuck around. Now, gnocchi. What do you know about gnocchi? What do you know about gnocchi? Um, gnocchi, at its very simplest, is potato pasta. What does that mean? What that means is that we aren't going to add any milk. We aren't going to add any oil. We aren't going to add any moisture, except for this egg, to two cups of flour, one cup of, of mashed boiled potato. You can do roasted potato. We're going to turn this into a dough. We're going to roll it out. We're going to turn it into little nubbies. We're going to boil them. We're going to saute them. And we are going to top them with sauce. This is... It's one of my favorite types of pasta. I, I, I love this type of pasta. It is it is just, it's, it's freaking delicious. It's little dumplings that gather so much sauce. They're tender, they're plump and juicy. It's just, it's fantastic. So what I have here is I have a couple of russet potatoes that I peeled and boiled. Now, you may be looking at these going, wow, those look like weird potatoes after you boiled them. Normally, russet potatoes are not potatoes that you would boil. Normally, these are baker potatoes. But these are the potatoes I really like for gnocchi. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my fork, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to mash these guys up. Very, very simple. Now once we mash all these potatoes up with our fork, straight potato. Get that moisture off the end of there. Now, we're going to add our other cup of flour. We definitely need it. And now comes the fun part. Because now, we get to get our hands dirty. We just get to get in there. So, really kind of work it from the bottom up with your hands using the torque of your fingers to work the dough together and incorporate all of this in together. Pressing it down, kneading it together, just like making a regular dough. Now it looks like I might have been a bit overzealous with adding that, oh, maybe not. I might have been a bit overzealous with adding that extra flour in there, but it seems that we are starting to come together really nicely here. So again, we're just going to drive that home. Now, obviously, it does help to be a little bit taller. Sorry, sunshine. I know, I know you're 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 not tall, um, 
but that's that's a key to, to like to this kind of stuff to really kind of mash it together is you need to get your leverage so if you have a stepping stool or anything you can kind of get yourself a little bit higher leverage on that wouldn't be a bad thing <sighs> right. so we're just going to kind of keep working that we're getting there we're starting to come together so our dough is forming it's starting to get actually nice and sticky so we are very we're getting there we are getting there just gotta keep just keep kneading just keep kneading right just keep going folding and folding punching and punching smashing and smashing all right and now we have Our gnocchi dough ball. There it is. Get that stuff out of the way. A quick wipe. And now. All right. So now we can just kind of, again, just keep kneading this a little bit more. Incorporate all your flour. And this acts just like any other dough. Pasta dough, bread dough. The only real difference is, is that your moisture comes from the potatoes. That's the biggest difference. So we are getting close here. So we're seeing everything is looking very nicely incorporated. It's fantastic. All right. Now. What we're going to do is we're going to break this into four chunks. Again, we're just going to work it with our hands. And we're going to work these into tubes because that's the easiest way to cut gnocchi. So now I'm just going to start rolling her out. That's what you know you don't have it quite tight enough. pieces and you can just knead them down. Come on, baby. Work. Alright. So let's try that again. Get that into a nice ball. And we're just gonna keep forming it with our hands. Oh, I'm getting some comments, aren't I? The, the, the missus is laughing, so she's ha she, you know she's having a good time. Hey, man, sometimes you got to show off your secret techniques. All right, so again, we're just going to roll this guy out. All right. And we're going to go... So about that thick. And now we do the next one. And now we do the next one. We're just going to do two. The other two um, I'm going to save and we'll probably make for dinner tomorrow, right? So again, grip and stretch. Grip and stretch. Oop. Oh, no. <laughs> Got a little aggressive. I'm sorry. Oh, danger zone. Nightmare fuel. Nightmare fuel. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to roll this last one out. And up we go. Again, two of the same thickness. So the other dough, we're going to save that for tomorrow. Now, get yourself one of these. This is a bench scraper. It's also known as a bowl scraper. This guy. Scrape your bench. Scrape your bowl. Very nice. I like very much. This thing will literally cost you a dollar at any baking supply store. It's great. So we're going to use this as our cutter because all we're going to do now is we are 
going to cut our gnocchis. Just like that. That's it. Same on the other one here. The only real thing you're trying to do here is be consistent in size because you don't want a whole bunch of weird different shapes and sizes because you're going to be cooking these all together. Just like so. Now, I'm going to grab my, my gnocchi board here out of the closet real quick just to show you guys something. a gnocchi board. This is traditionally what you would use to make, again, traditional gnocchi. Now, I'm just going to turn my water up here so I have a nice boil. My sauce is simmering away nicely. So what you would normally do is you would take your gnocchi and you would, each one of these, you would put on the board using your thumb and you press like this. You now have a traditional gnocchi. Now, what's the reason for this? Surface area, baby. Uh, it gives it more grooves. It cooks quicker. It uh, picks up more sauce. And it also kind of looks cooler. Um, do you have to do this? Absolutely not. Do you need a gnocchi board? You might need one in your life. I don't know. I don't know you. Um, but you can do this with a fork um, just as easily. Uh, again, I just happen to have a gnocchi board. Um, so why wouldn't we use it, right? So we're just going to take these little pillowy dumplings and we're going to press these nice little groovers into them. And that's just going to, again, just increase our surface area just a little bit. It's going to allow us to pick up just a touch more sauce. And it's going to cook these guys just a touch more fat, a touch quicker. That's it. So we're just about done. The last of these guys on the gnocchi board. All right. Just about there. Five, four, three, two, and one. Now, remember, folks, I've worked in places where I have to do that by hand every single order uh, for hundreds and hundreds of people a night. Uh, there is a lot of, the one thing that I hope some people kind of take out of these, these little sessions as well is when I do something like this, that maybe you've had in a restaurant, especially in a good Italian place that makes it by hand, you can now look at this process and go, holy crap, like I know how much work goes into just making just the gnocchi. That's it, like just the gnocchi, just the, the darn pasta that goes in the dish, never mind everything else that happens. We're just talking about the pasta. So, we are now going to take these beauties. They are going to go into some nice salty boiling water, because you know how we are about salty boiling water. So because I've had this water kind of sitting at a par at a soft, small boil for a while, I didn't add any salt earlier, so I'm going to add a little bit of salt now. Now we're going to take the gnocchi, and we are simply going to drop them right in. Now make sure you have something. Oh, errant gnocchi. Oop, thank you. Now make sure you have something to stir with, because you're going to want to keep these guys separated. So we're going to get that water moving. I'm going to go back up to full boil. And now, as soon as these guys float, they're done. You are completely done as soon as they float. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do one extra step just to really kind of jazz these guys up afterwards. And that's when I have the other frying pan here. So as soon as these guys are done boiling, and again, we just want to move them around. we got to keep those dumplings moving because we don't want them to stick to the bottom, A. We don't want them to stick to each other because that's going to impede the next process, because what we're going to do is we're going to saute these guys in a touch of butter with a little bit of oil, just to kind of brown them a little bit before we put them onto the plate, because again, we want more texture, right? Because this sauce is meaty, 
because there is a lot of stuff in there, we want these the dumplings, the gnocchis, to really stand out amongst themselves. And this is my favorite way of doing that. It also adds a really nice little crusty coating on them. And I think we all know how I feel about butter. Um, it's been it's been discussed at great length at uh, my love affair for butter. Um, so why wouldn't I use butter? So we're just going to set up our strainer in there real quick. Now, these guys have come up to a nice big boil. Again, with this recipe, the nice thing is, is that these are nice, tough dumplings. They can stand up to a nice, big, full boil like this. So it's just, it's just going. Like, these guys are going to, they're not going to fall apart on you, which me, which is nice. So these guys are firming up really nicely. And we're very close, so I'm just going to. Give it a blow down on top of there, just so you can kind of see how things are floating. Now, those guys are absolutely perfect. So, I'm going to keep my temperature at a full, full top, because that's going to come off. Frying pan is going to go on. We're going to strain these really easily. So, now you can see right now, they're all floating. So, it's fantastic. It's exactly where we want them. Now, I'm just going to strain these my handy dandy little strainer here. Those guys can hang out there for a couple seconds. Now, back over here. Back to our pan. Now, this is where we're going to make some magic happen. So, butter. There's always butter. A tablespoon of butter. teaspoon of canola oil or vegetable oil. Uh, grapes, grapeseed oil also works well. I do not recommend olive oil. We've gone over that a couple times. That's not my, my cooking oil. That is much more my seasoning oil. So we're going to get the butter around there really nicely. Now, the real key to getting good flavor in this is getting this butter a touch on the toasty side. So we're going to melt this down really nice and quickly. But we're going to keep it moving because I don't want it to settle quite yet. I really want that fat to stay liquid for as long as I can before we melt the whole piece of solid fat. Because now, now we're just going to let that sit. We're just going to let it sit for a minute because now it's going to froth. Now it's going to froth and we're going to get that butter frothing. Hey man, nothing wrong with pre-made cooking dough there, queen. Nothing wrong with that. As long as you're just not eating it like straight out of the pan. We don't recommend that. All right. So now, you can see a little bit on the pan. The butter is just starting to get a little dark. Okay? That's exactly what we're looking for. Now, we're going to take all these toasty good guys. Okay. So immediately, you can see that as soon as I put them in the pan, you can see they change color. Okay, so that's the brown butter. That's I'm picking up the, the toasty, buttery goodness from that, that discoloration of the butter. That's what we want. That toasty, nutty butter flavor, that comes from browning the butter. And it is a magical, magical process of just toasting the milk solids that come out of the butter when you melt it. It just turns it into this toasty, nutty, just wonderland of flavor. You can do so much with it. Brown butter caramel, look that shit up. Mm, that's money right there. All right. So these guys are doing really well. Now, as we've talked about in the past, everybody here that's in the chat should know that I am big on layers of flavor. So I'm going to season my gnocchi with a little bit of salt and pepper. We're going to put that just on the bottom, just at the end of the cooking process here. So those are completely done onto our platter. So again, we're going to serve kind of family style. So we're going to put our gnocchis on the bottom here. Mm -hmm. get all these guys in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Gnocchis. 
Next up, I need a big old spoon here. I'm gonna turn our sauce off. So we have brought that, that is simmered, that has done exactly what we needed to do. Look at that, just stunning, unbelievable color on there. And the texture of that sauce. Because we got rid of the extra moisture from the moose meat, before we put it back in there, and because of how fine it is, just look at that. It just sits. It's just beautiful on top there. Now, let's remember back at the beginning, we didn't add any salt to this. So I'm just going to take a spoon here. We're just going to taste this really quick. All right, the pancetta did not add enough salt, which is fine. But that's why we taste. So I'm personally going to add about a teaspoon and a half of salt into that sauce. Now, using the same spoon, but now dropping sauce onto the spoon rather than scooping it up because you don't want to contaminate your sauce. That's a chef trick right there. Perfect. That's what we wanted. Jeez. You cannot have... Get out of the milky there, wifey. No, go ahead. You taste test. You let me know how it is. Cheese is important, because cheese is for pasta, and pasta is for cheese. So we have some pecorino, uh, some, some pecorino, pecorino, what did I get today? Yeah, pecorino, pecorino romano. Great, nice, pungent cheese. It's got a nice, well, we can't just leave it there. It's going to have to go back now. Eat it. It's not that hot. Okay, so. Excellent, all right. So we got gnocchi on the plate. Now we're going to take the sauce. And we are just going to layer this all over top like so. Just like that. Now we are going to grab a few more nice big basil leaves that we have in the package. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to stack these just like so and we're just going to tear them, chop some torn, part, torn basil right on top. That's just going to give that a real nice puff. Basil aroma It's going to seep out, all those oils are going to start breaking down. And then for the last, absolutely not least, we're going to cheese up this bastard. Oh, cheesy. Don't be shy. You know I'm not. Mmm. chat to say when. We're at Olive Garden. Say when, chat. When? I'm hoping you're saying when, because that's enough cheese for me. Cheese. Ladies and gentlemen in chat, oh, what do we get? What's going on? Yes, of course there's so much cheese. It's pasta. It's pasta. There's got to be cheese, man. Like, come on. you got to cheese it. If you don't cheese it, then you're probably lactose intolerant, and I apologize, and I, I feel for your heart. Guys, thank you so much. There it is. Uh, homemade gnocchi, moose meat sauce with pancetta, tomatoes, all kinds of delicious things. So much cheese, so much herbs, so much love. Great for a fall day, great for a winter day, great for a summer day. It doesn't matter. You can do so much with gnocchi. Use that recipe. Explore it. If it's a little hard for you to work with, add a touch more moisture to that. It will help you out. Um, this recipe is very versatile. You can use it for so much, and that gnocchi will stand up to almost anything you throw at it. So please, experiment, explore, and show me. Let me see. Let me see what you do with the recipe. I really want to see that kind of stuff. Guys, thank you so much. Wednesday night. Holy crap, almost an hour. Guys, you are amazing. I love you so much. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out. Thank you for chilling. Thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting. Um, 
If you're not already followed, please hit the follow button. Uh, this video will be up in a little while up on the YouTube page, Uncensored Chef on there. You can follow me on Twitter, Uncensored Chef with an extra F. Uh, if you happen to have the means and feel so inclined, please hit that tip or donate button. Uh, all that money is going directly back into the stream. Uh, we got our first one the other day and we celebrated by grabbing some really nice ingredients. So it's not necessary, but always, always appreciated. Um, guys, once again, thank you so much for coming and joining me in my, ch in my kitchen on another cooking adventure. Um, I now have to stop a cat from getting into a box of Cheerios. So I'm gonna let you guys get back to your lives. I'm gonna eat this delicious dish. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks for coming into the kitchen. Eat well, have a great night. We'll see you guys next time.